Okay, so um, I'm going to have the panel introduce themselves, and the reason that I'm going to do that is because I can't pronounce Polish last <laughs> names. Um, so instead of embarrassing myself, we'll start with you, Marcin, and could you just introduce yourself? You're pronouncing my name very well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last name, last name. Okay. So Marcin Smolinski, I'm, uh, I'm a recruiter. I uh, worked in the recruitment industry recruiting mostly engineers for the last 15 years. Last eight years I spent at Google, which I left uh, five, six weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> and I came out of the closet. <laughs> Piotr? Uh, okay, hi everyone. I'm Piotr Nienzyński. I'm running operations at Base. Uh, running operations is something that people ask me what it actually is, but like 90% of time is actually hiring. So uh, that's what I do there. Thank you. Uh, okay, hello everyone. I'm Tomasz Klaus. Uh, I'm the author of this uh, uh, <laughs> company culture, <laughs> the David Show. <laughs> uh, I'm co-founder at Brainly. I'm taking care of product uh, there. Uh, yep, and that's it. Fantastic. All right. So um, the I the idea of of this panel is to get ideas from three pretty talented and experienced individuals about hiring and, and, and people processes uh, within three quite different organizations. And, and we're just going to refer to you as the Google guy for our purposes. <laughs> you invited me when I was still with Google. So. Does, it doesn't <laughs> matter. I mean, people still think that I work at Google five years later and say, hey, can you get me a job? Um, <laughs> so um, let, let, let's start off with you know, some soft questions, um, and, and then we'll try to make it a little bit more difficult. Um, so, can you just start, and, and anybody can start if, if, if somebody wants to go first, by just telling me, how do you attract people to your company? Okay, so I'll start. I <laughs> if that's the softball question, <laughs> I'm really, remember, I'm really uh, concerned what the hardballs are. Google. <laughs> okay. uh, so, it's pretty clear and it's obvious that, that Google has enormous employer branding. And uh, the picture that you were just showing with the water launch in Zurich with Luke Dick sitting on the sitting in the bath, you know, that's that's one of the reasons, you know, why why Google is considered to be a sexy employer. Uh, and Google definitely is a is very sexy employer. Uh, all those pictures from water launches, there is actually jungle launch that is much better in Zurich if you ever be if you ever go there. Uh, all of those things are actually generating lots of noise. Uh, and lots of noise also comes with uh, lots of traffic. Uh, Laszlo, a senior vice president of people operations at Google, uh, uh, mentioned some numbers a couple of years ago, like two million applications per year. And if you think about, you know, four to six thousand people that Google hires, that's a lot of resumes <laughs> that you have to go over. Uh, but Actually, Google doesn't have, have most of its hires coming from, uh, uh, from active applicants. Those guys who see the pictures of water launch and just apply. I want to be spending my days there. Uh, it doesn't work like that. Uh, Google actually invests lots of money uh, and lots of resources into outreach programs. So relations with universities, relations with mm -hmm. uh, uh, events that actually gather really talented uh, engineers. But the biggest source of candidates for Google, surprise, surprise, are referrals. <laughs> there is a saying, eternal, uh, internal saying uh, at Google that A players know A players. So actually, this is probably the most ultimate way of attracting great talent is by getting yep. friends of the guys that you already have on board. Yep. OK, so maybe I'll uh, take the... Uh Mike right now, uh, because Brainly is not a company that has the enormous employer branding yet, but uh, mm -hmm. how we act actually attract the candidates, it's not by building the employer brand itself, but mainly by focusing on good and great execution, and that's something that drives us a lot of like uh, natural applications, uh, especially on the business side of, of Brainly. By business side, I mean the non-technological side. Um, so basically doing some stuff like uh, talking what successes you have achieved uh, in terms of international expansion and stuff. Uh, appearing in media also like drives us some candidates, uh, as we are now a 50-person uh, company. Second thing I think is very important is our passion and the culture. Uh, we as the founders are very motivated, and I believe that everyone that comes to our 
uh, like say first interview immediately feels the uh, feels the passion and that's actu actually the kind of people we are uh, looking for yeah people with passion and by that i mean uh, we have pretty sexy mission which is like to revolutionize the way uh, students learn around the world so either the candidate feels this mission and uh, on the very first impression uh, is like our partner in terms of uh, of the mindset or uh, the second aspect could be that this guy wants to specialize in uh, something that he would be the master for. Yeah. So, uh, the so we don't build the employer brand very much by itself, by mostly by doing execution and uh, everything else will follow. Okay. Yeah. Great. Uh, okay. So I, I would start by saying that you don't want to attract everybody. Uh, <laughs> so you want to attract exactly. the people that are right for your company. Uh, so, like for instance, we were discussing this uh, picture uh, at Google. I'm not sure it's attracting the right people to Google. This one. So, this kind of marketing, no, I don't. Not at all. <laughs> I, 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 I don't yeah. think it's the right kind of marketing. Um, and uh, to be able to attract the right kind of people to your company, you you need to. And I'm going to uh, come to your point. Know who you are. Uh, mm -hmm. Meaning. Um, are you a fun company? Are you a serious company? What are your values? What you 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 seek in people? And when you know that, you will know how to reach those people. You will do those things that will attract those kind of people, whether that's doing uh, a, a drink up uh, or a hackathon or something completely else. Those will follow when you kind of understand who you are. Okay. Um, so last night, actually, Marcin, you mentioned to me that you had a problem at Google, uh, def uh, not defend, yeah, uh, defending yourself in a sense to candidates that were considering startups, and, and you were losing candidates that you wanted to startups. So, from your perspective, how do you compete in a sense for for people with startups? What 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 is the 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 pitch? Uh, so, <laughs> you know, you really cannot sell candidates. Uh, anything else than the truth, right? So when you're pitching to a candidate the opportunity, you know, you cannot really cross the line where you're just bullshitting, right? That's that's not working because you you might bring the person on board, you know, this person lives in six months, you know, that's that's much bigger failure than not hiring this person. Uh, so absolutely, you know, there is there is nothing unethical, you know, in presenting different sides of the story. So uh, when you talk to a candidate who is choosing between companies like Google, Twitter, Facebook, NVIDIA, IBM, etc., and has an alternative offer from a startup, you know, there is, there is only one way, right? It's to communicate with a candidate, learn what he, she wants, and present, you know, what in that regards can you offer. So take an example of a candidate who says no to your great offer and declines, uh, declines it. Uh, because he or she lives uh, is, is taking uh, is deciding to, to to join a startup, you know. Sometimes you have to ask this 24-year-old, you know, what do you know about the financing situation? <laughs> okay, and uh, how about uh, the product that you will be working on? I mean, what, did you do any research? What's the product's uh, mar market standing? Etc. Etc. Those are fair questions to ask, right? And sometimes people get excited over a startup because it's a startup, you know. We <laughs> all gonna drive Teslas in five years, yeah, and <laughs> you know, <laughs> and people get excited over that. Yeah. Uh, but but sometimes they don't ask themselves some some very simple questions. All right. So um, I, I I I like the approach. Okay. But but one more thing I want to hear is. What do, do you, if anything, say, you know, well, Google versus a startup offers you this? Like, do, is there any kind of selling that goes on where you say, for example, um, you know, we have great training or we have great this that you won't find at a startup? Do, 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 is there anything like that? So, you know, I would rather turn it around, you know. What do you want to do with, what do you do with your life? Do you want to be developing for trainings? Well, startup probably won't give you this opportunity, you know, while at Google we have uh, NGDU, you know, that employs 500 trainers, right? That do trainings like 24-7, literally. Uh, it actually very much depends on, on the relation that you build with a candidate to understand what he or she wants. Want trainings? That's fine. Want to be a billionaire? Likely Google is not the place. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. 
So, so, so um, fr from the other side, then, to make in Piot, um, you know, what do you talk to candidates about uh, that are, you know, nervous about startups from a stability perspective or, or any other? Um, so, I would say that, like, hiring just on on a pitch, like, people are excited because it's a startup and we're and we're it's a startup and we're going to be a millionaire is probably not the uh, not the best approach. Uh, I really believe in like being very uh, open and analytical about the, the situation of the company, and actually being able to um, to give examples and uh, say exactly why this company has a chance, what needs to be done, what we've been able to accomplish so far, uh, and and those are the things that um, with, without saying just oh we're uh, we're growing fantastically and it's going to be the next uh, whatever Facebook, uh, you actually give examples and tell your thinking behind those. Uh, those are the things that, uh, that I think convince people. Um, yeah. Okay. Just, to make, just to make clear, you know, I've probably heard, like over the last 15 years, only one someone telling me that he or she wants to be a millionaire. <laughs> I just gave it as an example, okay? Did it work out? Uh, well, I do want to hire a person who comes from an interview and tells you I want to be a millionaire. <laughs> no, but is the person why a not? millionaire now? Sorry? Actually, why not? Uh, no, 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 you don't hire this person for big corporate clients. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so from my perspective, it's uh, somehow related to what Piotr said, that basically you cannot just attract anyone to the startup, yeah? because it's not like uh, you can convince uber corporate, corporate-ish style person to, uh, to join the startup, yeah? but uh, for sure there is like a kind of people that still are finding their way uh, through, through their career, and uh, from my perspective, it's uh, ultimate decision always is at the candidate, yeah? but uh, we can kind of show uh, also the analytics being very open and transparent to the candidate. We try to show our culture to them that they will be able to like uh, have a huge responsibility. Uh, our mission is actually to make it that on day one, the candidate would make a real impact, uh, let's say, we change the product so that it will be delivered on the day one to the uh, whole our audience. But this is still what we are work working on. Currently, it's week one. Yeah, but yeah. So being very open, showing the culture. I think that about the external measures we can have is like the uh, maybe the investors who, if they decide to invest, is like putting the stamp of a, of a quality on the company. So that is something that also uh, I believe shows some kind of stability and uh, traction of the company that is not likely to disappear in, in one day, yeah? Okay. But if, if, if I may, uh, I don't think, like, if, if we're talking about IT people, stability shouldn't be an issue. Uh, because if somebody is good enough, uh, even if the, if the job ends after yeah. a year or two, they will easily find another job in an, in an instant. So, so that's probably not the uh, not why people would uh, uh, join uh, the company. It's mostly a, about not understanding what a startup is and what it can give you, or what it actually costs to to work in a startup. To add to that, basically, you know, this is this is actually you know what I heard a gazillion times. You know, oh guys, you're gonna be here two years from now. I'm just gonna go to a startup, give it a try. If it's not gonna work out, you know, if the next round of financing is not not gonna work out, you know, well, I will come back and re-interview with you guys. Yeah, what I think also is great is like to show the candidate the roadmap where we are heading, so where we are now and where we want to be in one year or two years. Yeah, so the candidate immediately knows part of what exactly he or she will be. Yeah, mm -hmm. so the decision is also much more easier. Yeah, so you are not building a spaceship but you're building a real a real product that will be that has some kind of great li likelihood of, of, of happening yeah okay so how many people in the audience uh, are looking or might be looking for a new job in the near future come on don't be shy <laughs> I, I, it's scary, I guess, if your boss is sitting uh, next to you, but... <laughs> David, I mean, let's wrap up. We're not needed here. Okay, nobody's going to answer it. That's fine. I, I, was told, I was told, like, asking those yeah. kinds of questions to an audience is, is mean. <laughs> but um, let's just assume that half of you are. <laughs> I think that's fair, actually. <laughs> So, so, so the, the, the that, would, that would be very sad, actually, <laughs> <laughs> because no. people are not working in the jobs they should be working in. But, but, but this is reality. Okay, this is reality as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's, it's actually 
rare, except that we're talking here today with, with people from exceptional companies. In, in reality, most people are not happy in their jobs. Okay, R remember that. But, but one of the reasons why people are not happy in their jobs is because they didn't know what they were getting into in the first place. And, and th thus my question is from the other side of the table, how do you think a candidate should evaluate their fit with you? Because if I'm, I mean, if I'm sitting at Google in an interview, I'm probably pretty excited right, that I get to go sit in the chair and watch fish. But, but, but you know, or, you know, go to your toilet. But, 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 but um, seriously, how, how do you yeah. think a candidate should judge the fit? Because I always tell candidates that that decision yeah. is just as important from their side as it is from, yeah. from ours. So I think that's something uh, actually we are doing pretty well recently because uh, we don't like to have this like uh, impression that here is the boss, here is the employee, yeah? everyone is a team member. And we also have it in the recruitment process. Uh, so, well, I would like to stress that recruitment process is a process like every other process and it has to be developed, it has to be nurtured, it has to be agile and you know, you have to be very smart about designing the recruitment process. And what we do actually is, uh, during the recruitment process, after there is a, some kind of initial screening, which is telephone or the interview at the company, and when we are kind of more sure that the candidate will fit us, uh, then we always invite that guy for a two-day uh, two demo day at Brainly, uh, where we have some kind of uh, objectives to be met, and th this candidate, uh, of course, have his or her own objectives, yeah, as to validate whether the company culture is the best culture that he can find or she, uh, whether the uh, goals we are working on are that sexy as, as uh, he or she impressed uh, up front. Uh, we are also very focused on getting something delivered within the, those two days. So, like on the first day, we say uh, we set a goal. Uh, we set the goals that has to be delivered, and on the day two, actually in the evening, we kind of have a bigger meeting when the candidates uh, candidate presents what he achieved, what were the obstacles, uh, and it's very good from the uh, both sides, I believe, because. Uh, Firstly, we as the company can verify uh, not only the selling stuff at the, during the interview, but we can uh, see the candidate doing the hands-on work. Uh, furthermore, uh, well, we can see how the candidate interacts with the other team members, whether he asks, which is in the Polish culture, I'm afraid, um, very, uh, something that should be developed. Uh, and what was even more on the day two, actually, uh, we kind of check whether the candidate uh, has also good presentational skills, not only <coughs> the hard skills, but whether he can tell what were the goals, what he achieved, or what was skipped uh, during that. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure it works very well. And uh, uh, why I why I am so sure? It's because the candidates uh, we have asked for those two today's demo actually were always e very excited about that and they thought nobody does that but it's cool yeah it's like well this guy is about to make a decision that will probably be for like two years of his life so why not invest two days of your life to actually make the good decision yeah that's our thinking about it okay so what was the first point on your presentation you no no who, who you are, are. Yeah. Yeah. and I think it goes the same way for the um, for an employee, for, for the candidate, for the person thinking about it. In most cases, people don't know who they are, meaning that they go into an interview and they don't know exactly what they want to learn about the company. They, they, they haven't, either they haven't researched the company well enough or even like spend the time thinking what they care the most about. When, once they've done it, they can actually ask about those things and actually inquire and go deeper uh, on those things. And people very rarely do this. Um, so that's, um, that's one thing. Another thing is that um, it's uh, quite okay, or it's actually great to ask the company what they are looking for. And they should be able to sp say it clearly, what they're looking for, and you can see whether this is something that you are, uh, or you, uh, you value, right? So that's, that's my take. Okay. Yeah, I, I, think, I think you remember the days, is my mic on? Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I'm sure you remember the days, you know, early days where, Google in Europe had like 500,000 employees. Remember, like half of the comp half of the candidates, you know, that we were speaking to, didn't know how Google makes money. 
<laughs> that was very poor done homework, right? I remember, you know, the ratio on engineers was, I guess, nine to one, you know, and uh, many of them didn't actually realize that there is a banner on the right hand side, you know, <laughs> showing them flights to, to Lisbon. Um, so, so I guess, you know, every candidate should, should do their homework, you know, and yep. uh, mm -hmm. whatever your fresh grad, 23 year old, you know, after a couple of internships going f into a first yeah. full time job, uh, or if you're an executive, well, the same homework actually needs to be done, you know, to know yeah. who you're interviewing with, uh, what this guy do, you know. Every, every Google, Google interview will have five minutes for asking questions. And uh, I'm not sure if you heard, but, but Google takes really seriously the, the Googliness factor when hiring people. <laughs> and uh, when there is a candidate who spends five on-site interviews without asking a single mm -hmm. question, oh, that's a bad sign. That's yeah. a very bad sign. Yeah. I love what Martin just said, because not, not on about the doing the homework, not because we are the homework health company, but, <laughs> 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 but uh, I think it greatly improves your chances of actually getting the job. Yeah. So, mm. Well, if somebody comes to me and asks the very right questions and wants to uh, dive deep into the details about the company, I'm always very excited to tell the details. Yeah, and it's uh, it also shows that you are really wanting to get the job. Yeah. So, what would you say is is the worst mistake you've ever made in hiring? Oh man, with this body count, uh, the gazillions. <laughs> 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 oh yeah. man, uh, how many? Well, how many? How many? You, you, for you, you know, you can be. Uh, I mean, uh, if, if if you. <laughs> yeah, I feel like actually <laughs> that's the appropriate answer: the body yeah. count. Um, uh, 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 Terrible my, word. Mine, if you want, if you want to throw it on me, fine. Uh, <laughs> the mo the most difficult thing uh, that I had to do was to fire. Uh, a guy that I hired to my team uh, who was also the best man at my wedding. Uh, oh. and, and, and that was a nightmare, as you can imagine. Yeah. Um, and, and, and it brings up the question of, you know, do you hire your friends? <laughs> a and really, there's no way around it, especially at a startup. It, it, it happens and people have great friends that are very smart and very talented and they want to work together. But there are fallouts, and it's inevitable, and it sucks, and, uh, and, and there's worse ones as well, because I'm working with a company right now that has no problem hiring uh, couples, which I think is a <laughs> recipe for disaster, <laughs> uh, but fine, everyone makes their own choices. But, uh, you know, firing, firing people sucks, but, but what I was hoping to get from you guys is, in terms of a mis hiring mistake, is, you know, how did you take someone on mm -hmm. that you thought was really the right person, but it turned out that they weren't? Yeah. And, and no names. <laughs> no yeah, names. yeah and, and it's, it's tough because you don't want to identify, you know, somebody out there. So <laughs> I think that the general advice here would be that, uh, that's what you said, you have to know who you are and who, who is the company ex exactly. No, but I want to hear your mistake. Yeah. I don't want to hear your advice. Okay. So... <laughs> The mistake was don't, actually don't, to... Don't make me get my chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> Jerry Springer. <laughs> we can say that the mistake I made was like promoting the great specialist to the role of the team lead, uh, which ended up after like three to six months of never-ending arguments between us and uh, inability to like get what I wanted to get, actually. Yeah, uh, And I believe that it's very crucial to... Uh, evaluate not the hard skills but the soft skills during the recruitment process as well, especially when you are talking about building teams and that stuff. Yeah. So I remember that as my like mistake to promote a great specialist to a poor team lead. Yeah. Okay. Whichever. Uh, so I had a similar situation to you, meaning like I was uh, very pushy and convincing to hire somebody uh, that didn't work out, and it was actually very. Uh, very difficult to part ways with uh, later on, but I think like if if, if you're asking like what kind of a mistake uh, I uh, I made that I'm trying not to make anymore is that is confusing uh, knowledge that somebody knows a lot with the fact that this person can actually deliver 
so like knowledge doesn't equal being able to execute. Yep. Uh, and it's actually, um, it, sometimes when we see somebody that is really, really smart, knows quite a lot of things, we're uh, kind of uh, stop seeing the fact that this person, for instance, hasn't shipped anything yet. Uh, that, that was substantial, right? So, so that's the, the biggest one, I think. So, uh, actually, on both of your points, uh, uh, let me throw a couple of phrases from Google. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, uh, the, to start to start with uh, uh, to start with, with what you just said, uh, the failure is not uh, okay. Failure with hiring is not always failure with hiring. It's sometimes a, a failure of of you as a manager. You know, you work you work with distributed team. My team was also distributed. You know, between three four countries. You know, and this is this is super hard. You know, when you hire a person who seems to be uh, smart, you know, you have no guarantee that this person will. Will be able uh, will be able to do the job remotely without you sitting next to this person, and it sometimes might be your failure as a manager rather than a, than a, than a interviewer or, or or a person or hiring manager. So Google usually asks a couple of questions. There is one two questions that Google always asks. You know, in regards to a candidate, smart and can get things done. Super important, right? Uh, that basically all sums up of, of what you just guys said, you know. And uh, my my biggest failure was hiring a person remotely, you know, a couple of times on the way that wasn't really capable of of doing stuff on on her own. So, and I take it as my manager failure yeah. rather than f hiring failure. And uh, just guys, if you didn't know that, the interview performers never reflects the on-the-job performance. <laughs> there are numbers that are proving it. So no matter how complicated, sophisticated, and scientific your recruitment process is, it's the manager, it's the project, and there is a luck factor that actually impacts the person's performance on the job. Well said. Um, I, I want to ask, again, the audience, um, how many of you have questions that you'd like to ask? <laughs> A, f a couple? Okay, Let, let's make sure there's enough time. So I'm going to let the audience uh, ask. Yeah, you still have uh, about 10 minutes, okay. so it should be time. Okay. I have more if you run out, but I'd like to give you the opportunity. Hello, uh, my name is Mav. I have a question uh, because you said that, um, that, f that it's very difficult to filter people who cannot execute. And in the, uh, the recruitment process, you do not have enough. For, from my experience, you never have enough time to check this so do you have any uh, do you have any hints or any advice how to actually check if a person can execute uh, sorry sure. versus versus them having knowledge let's uh, let's assume that they mm -hmm. do have knowledge but uh, how do you check that if they can execute so i recommend to every startup ceo a great book by ben horowitz hard thing about hard things just finish it great like one third of the book is about hiring you know what Ben Horowitz does when he hires people? He calls personally. Personally calls people that work with this person to check references. Uh, I don't, of course, he made bad decisions about hiring people. But man, this is like ultimate answer to your question. You know, does this person have a history of getting shit done? Yeah, past performance. That's that. That's what that's what it is. But you can get it. You don't have to call the uh, the people. I mean, references are necessary. Uh, not in all cases, but uh, if you can make them, that's that's great. But you can just ask the person w what they've done so far, and if they can actually go in detail about the stuff they've done, not just been on a project where somebody some uh, shipped something, right? Uh, you have to go beyond the selling mode and nail the real responsibility of this person during the recruitment process, and I believe you can always create some kind of deliverable that is very small that you can evaluate in practice, work hands, hands, hands on with this person and see if, if it fits if, yeah, to your company. Yeah. And again, the oh, oh. you know, question is if the person is not executing, is it his fault or your fault yep. as a manager? Yeah, exactly. There, yeah, there's, always, there's always that. And I would say what, what, what Brainly does and, and, and some other companies that I've worked with is, is actually getting people to do some kind of real exercise 
right? And, and some people, you know, Prezi brings people on site for a week, which I think is a bit extreme um, <laughs> in, in terms of time <laughs> commitment, um, but it, it works for them, right? And they do, they pay, do they pay for this time? It's paid, yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it, 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 it's hard to imagine how it works in the U.S. because you only get two weeks of vacation. But in, 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 in Europe, with, you know, all of the vacation, you can do it. But... Um, but, you know, you guys are doing it for, for, for two days, and I've seen people do it for an afternoon. And, and, you know, you can also do things like bringing people in for the second round with an actual presentation and say, you know, go back and, and build some presentation for me or do some mini project for me. I've had candidates offer uh, clients in, in the span of, a, of, of, a, of time because they couldn't do their interviews right away. Can I work on a side project that would help you to show you what I'm capable? Things like that. And always you can ask some advisors for help. If you have an investor, you can ask your investor to call the candidate. Yeah, you have to find guys who are smarter than you in talking and evaluating the, the guys. And if you are not sure whether you should take the candidate or not, probably you should not. So maybe you need to have a, another point of view to, to make you sure. Yeah? But that starts with putting your ego into a back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There are people smarter than me? Possible? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. There was, there was okay, so yeah. hi, I'm Michael. Uh, so my company, Showroom, grew within two years to 25 people. And mm -hmm. right now, me and my co-founder, we have this problem that basically all the day-to-day -day operations are still in our hands and we cannot really concentrate on the next strategic move, like going international. We just don't have time for that. So we decided that we need to hire someone that would take care of day-to-day -day operations here in Poland. And do you have any tips on, like, for example, what background this person should have? Should it be maybe corporate because it involves like creating procedures, processes, etc., or maybe consulting like in uh, Rocket Internet, they, they seem, seem to be famous of hiring such people. Do you have any tips on how to uh, basically hire such a person that will take over day-to-day -day operations uh, in this, such a company? So what would be the number one responsibility of this person? Uh, coordinating uh, Coordinating day-to-day -day operations, meaning like talking to the managers from different departments, making sure that we go to, like in line with the plan, business plan, uh, budget, etc., etc. Well, for for you guys, the most important thing is this person needs to be well dressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, this is also important, but sure. <laughs> they, but yeah, this person will be dressed well after they join us, and they will start buying on our side. Yeah. So that's not. So to be serious for a while, maybe. Uh, uh, <laughs> so what actually I would recommend uh, is to go for some kind of s senior talent, not bring the junior guys for such a strategic positions. Uh, well, you should look on the general manager's positions that are posted from Uber, which is like the biggest taxi uh, company in the in the world right now. Uh, you, you can also look at Handybook, which are the Uber for janitors, but basically they are have the very same uh, recruitment process and I believe they crafted their job descriptions and the requirements for these positions pretty well. Uh, I remember the top one requirement always for these positions is being data-driven. So if you have a data-driven uh, person, this person can always like drill down the very strategic overarching goals to the very to the smaller like smaller responsibilities can hire a good team for doing well execution yeah so my take on this would be that I would say that corporate is probably uh, not, not very likely to be the, the the right the corporate mindset in in a company like yours probably wouldn't work uh, maybe there are people I mean I'm sure there are people in corporations that would work but uh, but it's going to be harder. For, uh, if it's about like uh, getting stuff organized and kind of keeping everything in line, uh, so what I find is that people that run events like huge conferences are really good at those things, at working with many people and actually getting everything uh, organized. So that's one way to do it. And people that basically uh, are operational, let's say in a, uh, in a chain of restaurants or a, or a restaurant, people like this I think would be, uh, well, it's, it, it's a way to go, I think. One way of... One of, one of the ways. Yeah, I mean, like, we have a reason for fight, finally. What yeah. is it? Yeah. <laughs> I, I dare to disagree a little bit with both of you. I mean, like, <laughs> I, 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 I see where you're coming from, but, but uh, eventually, you know, there are uh, corporate people who, who do have, uh, do have startup mindset. Mm -hmm. They're here, you know? Yeah. 
Uh, he worked for a corporate, although you know, he was building a startup for this corporate, you know, kicking off Google operations in, in, in Europe, you know, many years ago. Uh, I, I think I have also a bit of a startup filial, you know, I, I started the Krakow office as well, you know, many offices in Central and Eastern Europe. Uh, so so that's, uh, that's to the point, you know, why, why corporate person might, might be a good fit, you know, as long as the mindset is right. Yeah. Yeah. And for data driven, absolutely. Uh, so I go back, you know, to the to the biggest advice that I took from from being at Google and seeing how people how great people are getting hired, smart and get things done, data driven, and the history of achieving stuff. You know, I mean, like you guys have sweet business. I mean, like I really I'm a big fan of showroom, and I told you that I already Thanks. spent some money with you. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so uh, you know. I think I think you you might have uh, opposite problem. You will have tons of people who want to go into this job and they will do everything, you know, to be our to be our you know country manager for Poland or, or CEO or whoever, you know. Then then basically try not to make the wrong call. But, but we can talk about it offline. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. So if anyone thinks he or she would be <laughs> perfect, <laughs> or just approach me. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna, we're gonna have to charge you money for that last <laughs> comment. <laughs> yeah. Normally, normally we charge nine hundred euros minute? per day. You know? One <laughs> more, no, one more question. We, yeah, we have so one, two, we have two time minutes. For so. One more question. So in the middle, there's two people that can fight to. Yeah, because we them really chair. wanted to have a fight. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Conrad, and I recently read uh, on the I believe Business Insider that uh, Google took all the data from the interviews and tried to decide which interviewer is particularly good in his job because he gives best score to the best people and they found zero relationships. So uh, are we just throwing some tips and, but at the end, uh, this, the process is random? What, that's what it means? Oh man. <laughs> Did you have the inside story? <laughs> no, no, I haven't read the story. Oh, no. Uh, basically, you know, both David and myself, we spent gazillions of man hours, you know, reviewing lots of data that are connected with people, that are connected with the, with the numbers related to it. This is what, that, the stuff that you're talking about is actually interview correlation, interviewer correlation. It's basically making sure that uh, all your interviewers globally are pretty much on the same level when it comes to scoring candidates, there's some certain scoring system internally, and, uh, and basically, you know, getting, having candidate in Korea and getting this person interviewed in Seoul for position in uh, California is so much easier, right, so when you have calibrated let, let, interviewers. Let, let, let me twist your question a little bit and, and give you a piece of practical advice. Okay, things may have changed at Google since I've been gone, but I'm pretty comfortable saying that the majority of people interviewing at Google didn't know how to interview just like the majority of people don't know how to interview, in my humble opinion, okay? Um, and, and that's just a fact, the, the, the way it is. But the way to do it properly, if, if you really want to nail the fact that the people doing the interviews know what the hell they're doing and making the right decisions, is to f identify the handful of people or one person to start with in the company that really makes good hiring decisions based on their interviews, right? Those people are the you know, super interviewers or whatever mm -hmm. you want to call them. And those people become the foundation for how you train the rest of the people who do interviews. Okay, and it's serious training. People have to follow those super interviewers and sit in on a couple of interviews that they do to they see how they do it. Shadow, then they it has to go back learn. the other way, and the super interview has to evaluate the interviewer. And it's a training program, and they learn how to do it, and you keep track of everybody's decisions and all the stuff. And I think whatever that article says and whatever Google did is bullshit because there is a correlation. The people that are, are good at making hiring decisions are good at making hiring decisions, and there's a reason for it. It's because they know how to interview. So I don't know the story, but it seems like they confused a couple of things. So. One thing, there is a way to figure out, you know, what are the your most calibrated interviewers in the organization, what they've just said, but there is no correlation between the interview result and the performance on the job, which I said earlier, mm -hmm. right? And that's, that's basically where, where I guess, you know, this, uh, this, uh, this, those two things got, uh, got confused. 
Cool. Yeah. Great. Well, yeah. we, we're out of time. So um, yeah. thanks very much for all your attention. And thank, thank you, you Marc and Piotr and Tumek, for coming up on stage thank and sharing your wisdom. Thank you very much for bringing us yeah. here. Good yeah. time. Yeah. So thank much. Thank, thank you, guys. You.